Night one of the draft in the books, guys. We're going to have wets. Clap it up. Yeah, let's you go. May, you made it through. Let's go. I made it through the most. That's the biggest storyline of draft. The <laughs> over. Yes. Oh, oh, my God. You're alive and well. Still, I'm still awake. <laughs> yes. No, no. No, seriously. It was great. Great. I mean, there, was, there was drama. There was action. There, you know, Surprises? It was, like, it was 15 picks before we saw a defensive player go off the board. Lots to unpack. Yeah. Plenty to unpack. But the thing that I will remember most, tier one by itself, is Michael Penix going to the Atlanta Falcons, yeah. which is, one, you could just never... Uh, envision that actually happening too. It just has a million repercussions. Three, the, just the content it's going to provide yes. with the agent and Kirk Cousins already kind of going back and forth to the organization uh, via leaked reports and quotes and stuff. The vision of Fontenot, uh, you know, talking to Arthur, Arthur Blank. Blank. Like it's just, it's all fantastic. Yeah, as we're going to look at the recap uh, of the, you know, how the draft went. That was absolutely the stunner, Jay. And That's the big story. I you know what, Matthew? I don't think it ended there. I think Brock Bowers going to the Raiders. Not that was a, lot a surprise of, as well. Right. Not a lot of people had that one. And like you said, it took us a long time. Pick 15 is where the first defensive player comes off the board. And Leatu Latu to the Colts. Yeah, there's no question about it. You think about the, you know, the the Chiefs getting Xavier Worthy. Um, that's really interesting. Ricky Pearsall to the Niners. A lot of people thought he was going to be a day that. two, day two pick as well. So suddenly uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about is Brandon Ayuk on the move when you think about what Pearsall does as well. So and, and you know what? And there's some really quality uh, lineman picks here as well. Yeah, a lot of quarterbacks got a lot of help. We're going to get to the winners. But before we do, Matthew, how about a loser from Yeah, tonight? I mean, well, we'll start with Michael Penix. You know, Jay, thanks so much for <laughs> uh, just starting there. But honestly, look, uh, when we started the night, there were a number of teams that needed a quarterback. Chicago, Washington, New England, Denver, the Raiders, the Vikings. And there were six quarterbacks that we expected to probably go in the first round. So Good it sort call, of made Jay. sense, right? It, Jay, 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 that was your bold prediction. Six quarterbacks would go in the first 13 picks, right? And that's ended up cashing. Good job there. So, but we expected sort of those six teams that I just mentioned to all wind up with a quarterback. And with Michael Penix going to the Falcons, he is to me the biggest loser. This is somebody that that had, look, great for him to be a top eight pick overall, right? It's a long road for him to get there. But from a, from a playing time perspective, he goes to a franchise that has $100 million guaranteed to Kirk Cousins over, in essence, the next three years. It's a four-year deal. They really can't get out from under that contract until three years in. Michael Penix is 24 years old or will be in a month. So there's a theory where he's not playing until year four, where he's 27 or 28. And, oh, by the way, the whole point of drafting a quarterback in the first round is that you get that, that playoff, you know, that you get that five-year window where they're on a rookie deal. Right, and the idea of Penix specifically is he was the most ready, the most ready to start of all the quarterbacks, and now he's going to sit. And so, from a fantasy perspective, he's by far the biggest loser because he's the only quarterback that isn't going to have any fantasy value this year of the rookies, at least as long as Kirk Cousins is healthy. Yep. My loser would be Brock Bowers just because there were other spots that he could have gone. Like he was he was the favorite in the market to go 10th to the Jets and have Aaron Rodgers as his quarterback and have really, I mean, I know Garrett Wilson's there and Mike Williams, but he's clearly the tight end if he's there. Could have gone to the Colts with Anthony Richardson, where it's Michael Pittman, but then not a great deal else competing with him. Instead, he goes to the Raiders, who just took Michael Mayer. And I understand, as you pointed out, Connor, they are different types, but still, it's Devontae Adams, it's Jacoby Myers, and also it's like it's Aiden O'Connell or Gardner Minshew as your quarterback. So not a great result for Brock Bowers. For me, guys, he was. how about the Buffalo Bills? And, yeah. and I understand, right? Maybe they didn't like Xavier Worthy like the Chiefs did. Maybe they didn't like Xavier Leggett like the Panthers did. But why are you trading with the Chiefs for crumbs, a team that has your number over and over again and saying, you know what, come into the spot, take the guy you want. We don't think he's as good as you do, but often the Chiefs seem to be more right than the Bills, if history is any indicator right now. I don't – I understand – you do business with a lot of different teams for your own draft capital. Why are the Bills doing business with the Chiefs and then trading out of the first round altogether? And they didn't miss the wide receiver run. There's plenty of wide receivers on day two. But I just didn't like the transaction at all for Buffalo. And I don't think the Buffalo fans did either when they saw Kansas City. Yeah, it cer certainly doesn't, uh, doesn't make a ton of sense. Like, you just, you know, 
you help the rich get richer, right? right? You know, uh, uh, which is a tough one. And you had to figure they were taking a wide receiver when they moved up. You know, Just when don't they answer called the phone. Out. Don't answer the phone. All right. How about who's eating good? Of course, served by Applebee's. Our winners on the night, Barry. Who do you got? You know, there's a lot of guys that you could choose. I'm going to go with Caleb Williams. So, so first off, look, we knew he was going to be the number one pick, but it was made official tonight. And he goes to a team that has DJ Moore and and Keenan Allen and and Cole Komet. And, you know, and Gerald Everett, who's a nice pass-catching tight end. And so, and then they go out after they draft Caleb Williams and they get Roma Dunze. And so while I think it's it's not a great landing spot for Odunze, who's got a lot of target competition, the fact of the matter is, is he's going to be another weapon for Caleb Williams. I don't remember a number one overall pick quarterback going to a team as loaded as the Bears are. Chicago saying, we are going to make Caleb, works, Caleb Williams work as much as we can. They're giving him his every chance of success. So I think he's a he's a big winner, like getting Odunze and landing on a team with that kind of talent. Yeah, and a good change of strategy from giving Justin Fields nothing for multiple years. But yeah, so many number one quarterbacks go to a team that is just threadbare. That's why they're picking number one overall. But having DJ Moore and getting Keenan Allen in this offseason and now drafting Odunze, Caleb Williams is a big winner tonight. Yep. My winner is the New York Jets, who I think benefited from the Vikings, frankly, kind of freaking out after the quarterback situation yeah. got a little weird with Penix going eight and trading up for the Jets. So they add additional draft capital. They fortify their offensive line anyway at 11 with Olu Fashanu, uh, who adds now to an offensive line, which is a disaster last year. Now they have Tyron Smith, who may not stay healthy, but he may stay healthy, and there's upside there. Morgan Moses, you've already got AVT there. This is suddenly now no longer a weakness of the team uh, and this team like the defense might be the best in football the offense is fortified and could be uh, a strength of the team after being a crippling weakness for so long like, there is I know you don't want to believe it but there is a very good there is a real chance that the Jets could be in the Super Bowl they have that level of talent on the roster I'd love to believe it yeah. I just need to see it <laughs> yeah. for me guys w uh, my winner on the night is whoever the Chargers over the next two days draft at running back right okay. and I know they got the Gus bus there but you add and Dobbins and Dobbins. I mean, who hasn't played a lot of football lately? <laughs> Fair. You have Rashawn Slater. You now have Joe Alt, who's a freak of a yeah. tackle prospect, such a special prospect. Jim Harbaugh, one of his quotes after was, "I know you're going to ask me about getting a weapon." He goes, "We got a weapon on the offensive line. This is a team that's going to run the hell out of the football. I think the Chargers are going to draft a running back that's very relevant in the next two days, and that player is going to be a big time winner because they're going to get a lot of work one day. Maybe not as a rookie, but at least in year two." All right, how about before we put a complete bow on this night, predictions going into day two. Jay, you got a bold prediction for me. Uh, yeah, bold, boldish, uh, bold adjacent. Uh, I'm going to say that there is going to be only one running back max taken before the third round. Obviously, we didn't have one in the... Th in the first round and so I'm saying that there will be potentially one tomorrow whether it's Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson but I don't think that we're going to see multiple running backs taken uh, as we continue to see that that it's just not a strong year for running back right. as opposed to uh, for instance wide receiver where we just saw seven taken in the first round. How about you Matthew? So I'm going to say listen this is this it's clearly a crazy quarterback uh, needy needy league and I think panics going to the Falcons sort of a lot of people sort of screwed it up because it's like, so now the Raiders still need a quarterback. Other teams that were rumored to maybe take a quarterback, the Giants are one of them as well. They're, uh, you know, the, the Jets have a 40-year-old yeah, starter. The Rams could. The, the Rams certainly could as well. So Spencer Rattler gets drafted in the top 50. I, like I think that. we see Spencer Rattler come up the board. He's the next quarterback on the board. I think he'll go. I think he'll go sooner than a lot of people think. It's been a good process for Spencer Rattler. For me, guys, I think we're going to have a hell of a wide receiver run to kick off tomorrow. I think in the first 15 picks, we could see up to eight wide receivers taken, and we're going to show my best available going into tomorrow. It's no coincidence that plenty of them play the wide receiver position. Yes, we got Ricky Pearsall and Xavier Leggett in night one. That was a nice surprise, but as you see here, Jalen Polk from Washington still out there. Troy Franklin from Oregon still out there. The speedster, Lad McConkey from Georgia. Matthew, I know you have yes. at least one dynasty share of Lad McConkey. Yep. Keon Coleman, Nat and I Mitchell right outside looking in on this list. You'll hear those names early as well. I really do think we could have eight go in the first 15 to 20 picks tomorrow. Yeah, a lot of fantasy relevancy there as well. It's been a great draft for fantasy football wise, unless you have dynasty shares of, you know, Brock Bowers or Michael Penix. There you go. Some leagues make you draft before the NFL draft. Looking at you, Scott Barrett. Who do you think the Bills take at 33? Feels like it's leaning towards Mitchell. 
Okay. I think yeah. that, you know, the fact they I, – I had heard the three receivers they did the most homework on was Xavier Worthy, Xavier Leggett, and Adonai Mitchell. They let teams come in to take Worthy and Leggett. So – Would you have preferred one of the Xaviers for that time? No, I think Mitchell has the most talent. It's getting him fully locked in. Yeah. Uh, I, once again, I didn't really have a problem with him passing on Worthy. It's that you just gifted the Chiefs the ability sure. to come up and get him. It's weird business. And the trade wasn't that they got a great return. They swapped a couple of picks. A lot of trades on day one involving picks, none that involve players. I wonder if we Ooh. see some players move teams in, in uh, rounds two and three now that some teams have seen what's available, what, right. they've, what they've wound up with and everything like that. That'll Her be... cousin's on the move. <laughs> Like, I know that sounds insane, but, like, like does Kirk Cousins demand a trade? Like, or do his – because his camp has been very active getting out the message that he is pissed. Um, so that'll be an intro- – that'll, that'll be a storyline all throughout from tomorrow night, and that'll be the other thing that'll be curious is, like, is, does anything that happened in the draft overshadow the Kirk Cousins uh, Atlanta Falcons it's be hard. rift? That that because that's going to gain more steam overnight and to during me, the day tomorrow. My other bold prediction, and this is more for the off season. Uh, I don't think Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel are both on the Niners when we start the year. I think that drafting Ricky Pearsall in the first round, just additional capital towards that receiver room already, and just with everything that's going on with Debo's number, with Brandon Ayuk needing to be re-signed, I just don't think they're all going to head into the season. It's not passing the smell test. There's a lot of drama around that. You take Pearsall, who I absolutely love, but the league looks at that as but, a mini reach <clears throat> Yeah, but you I know, think they'll be thing, fine. But, by the way, I'm but their window is yourself. now. The yeah, Niners' right. window is now, the, and and they have one of the older rosters in the NFL. So it, we all like Ricky Pearsall, but to to say like, hey, we want to go to the Super Bowl, but our number two wide receiver is going to be a, a rookie. rookie. I think they tell Ayuk to clam it, and we'll figure it out at the end of it. But too bad you're not going anywhere. Well, we're going to clam it here. We'll be back for the picks on day two. Cannot wait for Matthew J. I'm Connor. Catch you for night two. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.